Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of April. This month is huge. We've got Jupiter moving into Pisces and that's going to affect us all for about a year. So you will definitely want to watch your mini report this time around. Now you can look from your ascendant placement, you can look from your moon, you can also look from your sun as well if you would like to. That's important if you've got maybe a lot of planets conjunct your sun, one of the nodes conjunct your sun, uh, you know, perhaps you're a very creative person so you might want to watch all three if you have the time. Now if you don't know your ascendant, your moon or your sun in the sidereal Vedic astrology system, then click on the link below. You'll find a link below where you'll be able to put your details into a chart calculator and you will get all the information there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the planets for this month. But before we do that, I thought I would run through a couple of things. Firstly, if you are in Russia or Ukraine, my heart goes out to you. My heart goes out to all the innocent people who are stuck in a bad situation anywhere in the world, but especially in those parts of the world right now. Uh, I know we do have a viewer in the Ukraine who last month she very kindly let us know, you know, what's been going on in her area. And if anyone is in that area and you would like to let us know what's going on in that area, we would love to hear from you. We'd love to hear some real news for some real, from some real people who are there. And I haven't been studying the situation in too much detail. Uh, I've, I've kind of had my head down doing a lot of client readings and a lot of work. So I haven't been looking up too much of the regular news. Or, well, I don't really tune into regular news anyway, but not even the alternative news at the moment. I just caught up with a couple of people yesterday uh, while I was doing these notes. So um, I, my understanding is that I think things should start to calm down mid-April onwards. And I have heard from some alternative sources that it's not going to escalate, it's not going to get worse. Things are going to calm down. And, you know, I think it's, it's a transformational time and it will be. We've got some tough planetary alignments uh, in the sky. We've got some big shifts happening at the moment. And we've certainly got this big shift of Jupiter into Pisces. We're going to explore that together now. Before we do, I thought I would bring up uh, some of the quotes actually from some of the videos I've been putting together because one of you, and I'm going to bring this up on the screen, your name is Baba J. And Baba J, I absolutely loved your write up last month. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. And it's kind of inspired this section where I thought, well, since I'm a bit pressed for time and sometimes I don't have time to write back to everyone, why don't I take a handful of the really good comments and maybe feature them at the start of video? So your comment was incredible because I really loved your analysis of all the planets. Uh, you definitely gave a rundown of you know, what you think is coming up, what's happening. If you do start your own astrology channel, please let us all know. We would love to come and watch that. I know I certainly would. So definitely everyone, if you missed that write-up, have a look at last month. Click on Baba J's write-up. It's, it's nice and long and there's a lot of terrific uh, astrological analysis there. So do take a look at that. There were another couple of questions which I'll just quickly answer now. So one was from Aquariana. Hello. Uh, I've seen your channel. It's very good. Everyone check out Aquariana. Now she writes, hello, just a general question, not specifically related to this video, but I would like to know which Ayanamsha should we use? Now I use just standard Lahiri Ayanamsha that comes with Parashara's Light 9.0. I have another question by one of you who also asked... Can you explain why you use true node over mean node? Yeah, so again, uh, this comes from Mula Moon. This is a great question as well. It's similar to the one about using Lahiri Ayanamsha. Why do I use what I use? Well, you know, I don't have a very exciting answer for this. Actually, I just use the standard settings that have come with my software. And my goal in astrology is more so to hone my intuition 
with one system. And that's, that's mainly what I'm doing. Uh, and I just want to, at this stage, get really good at that. And I think perhaps I'm a little bit more intuitive than I am astrological at this point in time. I'm studying astrology every day, all the time, I'm trying to get better every day, all the time. It is such a big subject that has really intimidated me. I was even scared to start this subject because I thought, how am I going to learn all of that? You know, it's just huge, right? And um, so at the moment, me, I have just really been using the standard settings that came with the software. You know, I haven't played around too much with any of that. So uh, I do hope that's a good answer. It's not the most astrologically exciting answer, but as I learn more about these things and you ask questions, I will certainly share what I know. So um, yeah, and the other quote came from, oh yeah, I like this one. Um, Mr. Gerardo mentioned a few days ago, the New York Post confirmed that the Hunter laptop story is true and not Russian propaganda. Absolutely. Yeah, these things are going to keep coming out now. We're going to see, and I, this is in line with the video that I made about the fact that truth is coming out mid-March onwards. Okay, and so this kind of links in with that question about mean node and true node, because, you know, I am basing everything on mid-March truth coming out, right? So that would be, that's true node, I think. And um, yeah, it. With astrology, we do have this phenomenon of, let's say, for example, I say to you, oh, everybody is driving red Audi TTs. It's the thing. Everyone loves them. So then you go for a walk and you're on a main road and all you see is red Audi TTs, right? Why, why is that? Because when you're trained to focus on just one thing or you have one thought in your mind, then you will start to see that everywhere you know so this is the thing about me using you know true node because well i i believe it's true node so i'm constantly looking for evidence and information that is going to prove my thought you see so the other node could be good you know i i haven't experimented too much with it but it is that thing of, you know, you see, yeah, you, you talk about a red Audi TT and you start seeing them everywhere. Perhaps that's not really a popular car, but if that's the only car you have in your mind, you'll start to pick them out of the crowd kind of thing. So, yeah, some of astrology is a little bit like that. As you can see, I'm also very interested in the psychology behind astrology, the philosophy behind it as well. There's a lot to this subject. So, okay, and the other comment, was there another quote? Let me have a look here. Did I capture them all just now? There was another comment actually by Hera with the Wake, but I couldn't find it. Um, Hera with the Wake has always put lots of great comments on this channel. And one of the things that you had mentioned in your comment, which I can't find, was that Ketu, being in Libra, you said surely that could suppress justice. I fully agree with what you were saying in that comment. I thought that was a brilliant observation because I was saying that, well, I think we should start to see justice creep back in. But with Ketu as suppression energy being in Libra, that might well suppress justice in the world. It's very true. Um, I was watching a video today by Russell Brand and it's titled The Truth is Coming Out. I thought this was a really good video actually because he mentions a document that could be suppressed for 75 years, I think he said. And a judge has declared, no, nope, we'd all like to see the document. So I thought that was really interesting. And that video came out today on the 23rd of March. And this is quite in line with my prediction that, you know, mid-month onwards, we should start to see some truth coming out and even possibly some justice happening. But, you know, uh, as is rightly pointed out, Ketu in Libra could su suppress justice a little bit, but we do have Jupiter making his way back to Cancer. You know, he's picking up steam. And now, look at this, he is going to be in Pisces, and that's what we're going to talk about now. So it's exciting. We, we are heading back to more normality, to the values that create a civil society, to coming together, to, you know, not just being motivated by money. You know, I do think that Jupiter in 
uh, cancer, that, that, is, that is true leadership. And that's my definition of leadership, which is that you do the right thing, whether it benefits you or not. That's very Jupiter in Cancer, isn't it? And, and, and Jupiter's making his way back there. We are heading back to better days, or heading, well, back to better days. Hmm. Heading to better days, right, in the future. Things are changing, but right now we are still in some difficult territory. And we're going to take a look at the planets for the month of April. Now, as a quick summary here, I'm kind of seeing this as being instability potentially in the money markets. Um, or even we could even have some tech problems because we have Mercury alone with Rahu. But let's take a look at where I think there might be some instability in money markets. This is talked about by many people, uh, including Baba J. I recommend everyone go and read that because that was just so good. And I, I can't really uh, top that, but I can add to it. I can add to it my interpretation of, of what's coming up. So we've got 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th April. These could be really tense days. We have Mars at war with Saturn in Capricorn. Okay, this is quite tense. And we did see that Mars at war with Venus, that is the time where the tension really began in Ukraine and Russia. So we saw the, the tension really uh, coming up there. And that's why I see when those two move apart, and especially after this Mars war with Saturn, we should start to see things, I think, cool, cool down, calm down, I think, in, in that region. So Mars will be at war with Saturn in Capricorn. Mars is exalted as well. Uh, he's feeling powerful. Jupiter aspect on Ketu in Libra. One of the things I'm seeing here is a potential focus and a swelling in the global financial markets. A bubble in the financial markets that, that may burst in the future. I do think there's going to be some instability uh, in, in the financial markets, and especially with this Rahu Ketu shift that we've just had. You know, could, could there be some heightened activity there as because it, it's a new energy? And sometimes when there's a new energy that comes in, it can be disruptive when it's, when it's new. Saturn's third aspect on Saturn in the 12th. This could be a materialization of losses. The Sun is the Lord of the fifth house. So fifth house touching that line of uh, money markets there, that 511 axis. 12th of April could be a time of losses in the money markets. Mars and Venus in Aquarius, also a focus on share markets. 9th to 14th April, we also have Mercury alone with Rahu. Yeah, I, I think this is quite significant as well, having Mercury alone with Rahu in Aries. So this is technology. This is, this is tech. This is, you know, uh, it could, it, and I've got the note here that it could be something to do with money markets, but it could also be something to do with the technology backbones that that run our lives. There could be a problem there. There could be something going a bit extreme or out of kilter there. That's a possibility as well. So that's 9 to four, nine April to 14th April. On the 30th of April, we have Saturn stepping into Aquarius. So this is very exciting. May, June, July is going to offer all of us a taste of this brand new energy. We are gonna taste Saturn and Aquarius. And for some of us, we're gonna like that, and some of us, we're not gonna like it. Uh, it depends on where Aquarius is in your natal chart. So I think in the next episode, I'll be looking at that Saturn in Aquarius preview. Okay, so we're all getting a little preview. We're getting a taste of Saturn in Aquarius because he's going to step back into Capricorn and then when he next goes into Aquarius, he's going to be there for 2.5 years. He's going to be there for some time. So I will definitely cover this next month. But this month, we have the big news. And the big news is Jupiter in Pisces. So what can this mean for all of us? Now, before we get into that, when is it? So Jupiter in Pisces is going to be 14th April 2022 to 22nd April 2023, as per Parashara's Light 9.0, Standard Settings, Lahiri Ayanamsha. All right, so now Jupiter is an expansion energy. 
Saturn and Jupiter are the great materializers. Okay, I always look to these guys when it's, you know, when, when you want to manifest or materialize something big in your life, these are the two that I look to and I want to see what they're doing. So Saturn's third aspect on Jupiter can materialize a lot of stuff. So this is really quite interesting. A lot of things can be made real. Saturn is also the realist. Saturn materializes, he makes things real. Jupiter is expansion. Jupiter is also our dreams, you know, making our dreams come true. So we can achieve a lot of things here. From July 2022 to Jan Feb 2023, that's when we're really going to have that Saturn third aspect on Jupiter. And that's when we can materialize the following things. Okay, so single ladies can materialize a partner. I don't know if that's good news for some of you, but maybe it is. If that's something you want to do, if you are looking uh, to, you know, find a husband, you know, meet a husband, boyfriend, something like that, this is a good time for that. Uh, well, how about collectively? Well, let's get collective because we'll go personal in the mini readings. But collectively, what can this mean? Well, Jupiter's fifth aspect on cancer can materialize more justice in the world and a return to a civil society. You know, things like care for disadvantaged people, better leadership, stronger values, uh, a stronger feeling of all is one, you know, that we are all one humanity. Because Jupiter in Pisces, this is the place of no boundaries. So unity is the thing here. Unity is really, really important for Jupiter. Jupiter's ninth aspect on Scorpio for many can mean career transitions. Okay, so a lot of people might, what are some of the material things that might happen? People might lose their jobs at this time as well. So that is July 2022 to Jan Feb 2023. There have been a lot of job losses ever since Saturn went into Capricorn. We've continuously had job losses. You know, this, this has been a hard time. This has been really, really difficult. But it's certainly not going to be like this forever. And I always think that when Saturn presses a weak link and he breaks through and he dismantles something, I always think it's creating room for something better to come along, for something stronger, for something that we enjoy more, for something that's more suitable to us. So let Saturn do his work. This is Pluto as well. Pluto's in Capricorn doing the same. But yeah, career transitions are a real possibility here. So this is the kind of thing where if you want to leave one line of work and do something totally different, this is actually a really good time for that. So that is July to Jan Feb. Of 20, July 2022 to Jan Feb 2023. Uh, yeah, you can pursue the career of your dreams, definitely. Discontinuity may materialize. You know, things stopping, things just ending. We, we can have some endings here. And there is loss here. Pisces. Pisces is a place of, of loss as well, you know. Um, a large planet in a water house. So people might be run down, tired, health problems may arise. I know this all too well. I have experienced this. What I've noticed is when my Saturn is going through a water house, my goodness, I am tired. I'm run down. I can't do as much, which is very frustrating and annoying. But yeah, it's, that's how that is. Now, so that's July to January of next year health might be in focus again. People might be feeling tired, might be feeling run down, loss, loss of energy, loss of health. These things are possible. We could also have a loss of separation, a gain of unity, right? We might unite more. These can also be times where we become dependent on family, okay, for example, and that's a classic. You lose your job, you need to go home and be with the family. Okay, these kind of things will be happening uh, potentially at this time. Also, Jupiter in Pisces. Now, this is a bit of an unusual one. I, I don't know. If, uh, well, but ha have a listen. I'll run it by you. So uh, I've got here, expect a lot of people experiencing dark nights of the soul. 
Okay, some people might plunge into the darkness as well. I know that's an odd thing to say for Pisces, but this is the subconscious. And depending on what you've had going on in your life, depending on, you know, um, how busy you've been, because with the strong Capricorn energy, some people have been working themselves into the ground. Some people have actually been working really, really hard. And this might be their time of burnout. This might be their time where, you know, um, they need some time out. Some, some people will be needing some time out. I also have the note here that some people might be plunging into darkness, but equally, uh, and I don't mean darkness in a bad way. I don't mean like, you know, people are going to, yeah, no, nothing too dark. But what, what I mean is that dark night of the soul, that, that time in life where you really you really need to stop and reassess everything and you really need time for introspection you need some hermit time okay this is a big planet opposite virgo you might need time out i've got the note here deep introspection is possible at this time but i am seeing the possibility that huge numbers of people are going to awaken so let's say we think that 25% of people are awake and not not woke but awake <laughs> it's very tricky business this but you, you know what I mean right 25% I, I heard one of the alternative media people the other day saying he thinks it's around 25% this could be the time you know Jupiter and Pisces for this year where that that number 25 goes up to 28 or 30 you know this this could be quite a time of awakening this could be pretty amazing so and maybe that's conservative right to say 30 percent maybe it's even higher i'm not sure but i am certainly excited by this time how are we doing 28 oh, 22 i there are a couple of other things i wanted to look at one one other thing and i'm just going to sneak this in here because I was, I was chatting with my mum and she said, oh no, don't, don't put that in there, but I think we will. Let's, let's just take a little look and I'll, I'll code word this in the um, timestamp thing. I'll call it London Bridges Falling Down. How about that? I'm going to call it London Bridges is Falling Down. So those of you who are still watching, you're in for little treats because what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the chart of Queen Elizabeth. I do just want to touch on this briefly because I think this is kind of interesting and you guys know me in these monthlies i will sometimes look at the chart of living people and i feel like it's okay if i don't put their name in the title okay so i'm not putting you know it's not clickbait and this is not this is for genuine people who want to learn and who are still here or some of you who've just left this on while you're doing the ironing and, and you're stuck here because you can't switch me on to something else but if you're here, let's take a look. <laughs> so let me bring up Queen Elizabeth's chart. I have not prepared any of this. This is totally off the cuff. Oh gosh, I can't even find her now. I've got so many charts here. Not Queen Margaret II of Denmark. No, we want Queen Elizabeth. Okay, now what I'm looking at is I do think this is the end of an era, guys. And I, I, I don't like to, and I, you know, I agree with, I think it's Robert Svoboda who said, no one can predict, predict the time of anyone's death or anyone's passing. I agree with that. I don't think that that's possible. And that's not something I've particularly looked into or studied or know much about. But having done a lot of master's episodes, especially, I do get to see when is the time when people you know make that transition okay they're leaving the earth plane i do get to see when that happens and i'll tell you we've got a couple of signs right here in the chart of queen elizabeth so what we have here is she's running hi everyone let's get back to this chart she is running just at the juicy bit just as soon as it gets interesting right so jupiter rahu she's running right now yeah she started running this july 2021 and she'll be running this until December 2023. So I really do think that this entire window, less than this window, you'll see uh, some of this window could be quite a time of the end of an era. I'm going to phrase it like that, or that whole London Bridge is falling down procedure or whatever that is. Some people in the alternative media are claiming that, you know, she isn't 
particularly here. Again, very speculative speculation. I don't know. I don't have a clue about that. But what I can tell you is that this is a, this is a classic time for an end of an era, okay? Uh, or an end of a reign or, or the, the end of something. There is an end here because we've got the last Antardasha here, Rahu, um, Jupiter Rahu, okay? So, and she's running Jupiter Rahu. Jupiter is seated and Rahu are seated in Marika houses. Okay, so that's the first thing to see. Now, the next thing to just take a little look at is um, transit wheel. Her um, Saturn is about to step into eighth from the moon. Okay, and that is a point of discontinuity. And I've seen this happen. I've seen this is the time where people's careers change, where you totally change and transition career. That's what I did in my eighth from the moon. I've seen this many times. Many people totally change what they do at this time. But it's discontinuity. I have seen, um, yes, some people, you know, they, they uh, leave the earth plane at this time. In fact, Bruce Lee left at only the age of 32. And one of you did ask me in the Bruce Lee Masters episode, you know, did I see astrologically what was happening there? And I did. He was running Saturn 8th from the moon at the time when he left. And what was tragic for him was that his uh, Samudhya Ashtaka Roga points were something like 19. It was so low. And if we take a look at the queen, she her points are actually pretty high. So, you know, it's, it's an interesting one to predict here. Hers are 30, 30 points, that's strong. So I'm not able to say for sure, you know, um, is this the end of an era, but it, it might well be. And it, it wouldn't surprise me if um, something like this was to happen this year or next year. But, you know, I'll, I'll well, we'll know. <laughs> That's one piece of news that everyone's going to find out. But I think we should get on with the mini readings. We're going to take a look at Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now from, and this is, by the way, I'm just going to do this every now and then periodically. I will do this. I will say Aries Ascendant, Aries Moon, or Aries Sun. Welcome. So... And definitely check your ascendant and moon, okay? Some of you are getting a lot of benefit from looking at all three, and that's great. All right, so let's begin. 8th April to 17th May 2022, what do we have? We've got Mars making quite a movement, uh, and this is important. Mars moves into Aquarius in your 11th house. Oh, this is fantastic. This is an excellent transit. I'm very happy for you, Aries. I've got excellent news for you right off the bat. You're going to have energy. You're going to have opportunities. You have the potential to switch jobs. You could go for a promotion. You could really grow at this time. You could grow your network at this time. This is very exciting energy for you. And when it comes to your Jupiter transit, let's take a look at this. So now this is April 2022 to April 2023. Jupiter is going to be moving into Pisces in your 12th house. Okay, you might feel with this... This is a little bit of a mixed one, okay? So sometimes you might discover there'll be fluctuations in your physical energy. There might be fluctuations in your money as well. Uh, this is a really good time to just be conscious of your energy, be conscious of your money, and be conscious of what's going out, okay? Because, you know, um, at times you may be a little bit depleted and you just wanna be on top of that. Long distance travel is certainly possible with this transit but definitely take extra care because i do think that travel is not it's it's still it just intuitively it just doesn't feel like great time to be making big travels so take extra care if you do have to travel uh, this could be a time where you really engage in your spiritual studies maybe you're finding new gurus you know, through YouTube, through the comfort of your own home. I found uh, one just recently, a friend of mine recommended Alice Bailey. So I've got one of her books coming in the mail. I'm so excited. You know, going on retreats, this could be a time where you go on retreats. Of course, a lot of people are providing online retreats at this time. This is excellent for creative people, excellent for writers, excellent for jobs that require solitude. Okay, now we've got a new moon, Pisces, Revati Nakshatra 
this is happening on the 1st of April. For you, it's going to be in your 12th house. I'm excited. This is good. Now, Mercury is here as well. So this is a really great time to see if you can capture any incredible creative ideas. You've got a kind of quite a portal here of, uh, you know, ideas and insights coming from the other side. So make sure you keep a dream diary by your bed or keep a journal or, or even just keep like a tiny, I keep a couple of pieces of paper in my purse and I always have a, um, you know, a pen in my handbag and, you know, you never know when inspiration strikes, right? So you have to be ready for it. Also, you can use your phone. You can use the voice recorder um, app in your phone. I've done that sometimes. I do prefer to write things, but the other thing with this new moon on the 1st of April is that you might be more psychic too. Okay, so hopefully you're watching this before the 1st of April, but if you're watching this afterwards, um, you know, it's okay. Just, uh, let's see, what can you plant a seed for? Because you can do this afterwards as well. You can, you know, plant a seed. Well, you can plant a seed. You might miss the psychic insights that are coming, but planting a seed you can do, and you could plant a seed for for, well, heightened psychic sensitivity, if that is something that you would like, um, to definitely, you know, you can, you can plant a seed and wish to be more in tune with your own subconscious mind and to be, you know, getting the right insights and the right information at the right time. That's a good thing to wish for, for the 1st of April. Now, the full moon, Libra, Chitra, Nakshatra, this is happening on the 17th of April. This is in your seventh house so again this is a very creative full moon you have a creative new moon there pisces revithi nakshatra you've got a creative full moon here so you're going to see some cycles close potentially in relation to your business if you're self-employed in particular also cycles might be closing in relation to your social media or your public or something to do with definitely your work especially if you're engaged in global markets or anything like that you could also see cycles close in relation to your marriage if you're married and it is a full moon eclipse actually and I will cover this in another video because we've actually got two eclipses um, in this month of April so I do need to do another video that's one of the eclipses as per sidereal Vedic astrology and then there's another eclipse, I think, on the 30th of April. So I will cover that in another video. But you are going to see April, you are going to see some cycles come to a close. And it will be important to observe what those are. As I say, it could be for you in, in relation to yourself, your in business if you're self-employed, or uh, marriage, partner, your public, the other, anything like that. All right, well, thank you so much, Aries. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at two things. We're going to take a look at the movement of Mars and the movement of Jupiter. Then we're going to take a look at the new moon and the full moon. And this is for Taurus, ascendant, moon or sun. Okay, so now on the 8th of April to the 17th of May, this is the movement of Mars. So Mars is going to move into Aquarius in your 10th house. So you might feel quite ambitious. You might feel quite driven. During this time, this is very good for career, but after May, that's going to be the time where you're going to really win. That's the time you're going to really see the abundance and you're going to see the opportunities and all the good stuff really come in. So this period, 8 April to 17th May, you're putting in the groundwork. Okay, so it's a good time to be ambitious and career focused, but know that you may not be seeing the rewards immediately. You will see them when Mars moves into your 11th house. Okay, uh, April of this year to April of next year, we have Jupiter moving into Pisces. This is the big news. So Jupiter is going to move into your 11th house. Oh, I'm so happy for you. This is great. This is really great energy. So success, opportunities, money. This is excellent for networking. This is excellent for expansion. This is excellent for, you know, you just being able to bring in more abundance, okay? You just being able to connect to more people, opportunities, places, faces, all that kind of thing. You, you will have so much more abundance potentially. 
if you work with the energy okay it is going to take work i always think that you know things don't drop out of the sky there are placements there are astrological placements where you can see that things will drop out of the sky but most placements and most charts from what i see you do have to put a bit of effort to uh, you know bring the good stuff in the other great thing is that you can meet the love of your life potentially so this is this is networking this is people you can meet people so this is great if you're single okay it's especially great if you're a single lady and you want to materialize a man okay Saturn third aspect on Jupiter there so that's very good uh, you can also enjoy really great times with your children so if you have children you can have a lot of fun with them do stuff with them and you know the world is opening up a bit more now and it is possible to do more stuff which is great so that should be good now there's a new moon happening Pisces Revati Nakshatra this is on the 1st of April okay so now this new moon is happening in your 11th house brilliant so what are you going to wish for well I would say put in a wish to Jupiter ask Jupiter that what you want to have happen this year so get quite specific and quite real and practical about what it is that you'd love to see happen this year and Mercury is here as part of this new moon so it is important to be practical to be a little bit real to be you know we have these fantasy dreams but what about the real dreams that would make a real difference you know um, sometimes dreaming and asking for something that is practical and immediate sometimes that's a really good thing to do and on the 1st of April you can dream and ask for those things ask for those things that are really going to make a difference and it could even be more time you know maybe maybe you want a part-time job or maybe you want to shift gears a little bit or maybe you know um, but something practical and real that'll be really good that could be a good thing now you've got a full moon happening in Libra Chitra Nakshatra this is 17th April this is happening in your sixth house okay so this is a really creative moon creative full moon this is an eclipse as well and I will be doing a video about the eclipses as per sidereal Vedic astrology we've got two eclipses this month I didn't realize myself I was going through the notes yesterday I was like oh wait a minute we've got two eclipses this month so I need to do a video about that but this is a full moon eclipse this is 17th April and it's a creative moon so this light this abundant light may illuminate how to compete at work it's around competition at work it could also be um, that some cycles are going to complete around your work around your career your service in the world or something to do with a legal case might culminate and close some projects at work might culminate and close this could just be a lot more light that's illuminating a situation that's illuminating a tense situation that you're in perhaps with a competitor you know someone at work something that's been really complicated you might get a lot more light you might get a lot more insight but definitely you know as we do have eclipse energy here you might discover that a cycle really comes to a close uh, and something something does stop but overall Taurus this is a really good month for you and I'm loving the look of yes you're one of the very lucky signs you've got Jupiter beautifully positioned for an entire year so really really enjoy that I'm super excited for you there Taurus okay we are now going to welcome Gemini <coughs> Gemini <clears throat> Gemini welcome thank you so much for joining apologies about my throat there just now all right what do we have going on well we have got a couple of big transits we're going to take a look at the movement of Mars first then we're going to take a look at Jupiter and then we're going to take a look at the new moon and the full moon and this is for Gemini ascendant moon or Sun okay so let's take a look at Mars so 8th April to 17th May we're gonna have Mars move into Aquarius in your ninth house so you might feel the pressure of your bosses at work you might feel the pressure of deadlines you might feel a little bit low on energy at times you might feel a little bit run down this is an important time to rest find rest where you can and if you've got some big work projects or 
ambitions or things that you really want to do. Save that for, you know, May onwards. You're going to have far better energy. You're going to have really good career energy May onwards. Okay, so don't, May, June, July, you know, those months are going to be better for career. Right now, this is a better time for you to, you know, take it, take it a bit easy if you can, if you have the option to do that. Now, Jupiter. Jupiter moves April 2022 to April 2023. He's going to be in Pisces for the whole year. This is huge. So for you, this is happening in your 10th house. Okay, so this is great if a part of your job or part of your career involves teaching. This is really good. People are going to listen to you. People are going to want your advice and all that kind of thing. Uh, sometimes at times you may feel like you know it all. And what I would say there is be really careful with that energy. Um, be humble as well. That will help with this transit. Now this is also a transit where you're going to want to take extra care in property. Property matters might, you know, it, um, it, may, it may not be uh, so smooth with such a big planet moving through this area. It's a great time to work with positive affirmations if you can. Um, this transit does have the potential to make you feel a bit negative at times. And if you had watched the introduction, what I was saying there about Jupiter in Pisces being something that could, you know, spark a dark night of the soul type thing, it, it really can. Okay, so, so work with your subconscious. Um, if you feel like you want some hermit time, take it. I've had so much of that and I've loved it lately. I've had so much hermit time, I'm actually really enjoying it. So um, yeah, I, I don't know if uh, this is seen as something welcome, but for some of us it is. But um, it's a great time to indulge in your spirituality, basically. And you know, it is good to work with the positive affirmations and, and things like that. Um, I can recommend Louise Hay. I know she's kind of, maybe she's a bit cliche for affirmations, but I love that stuff. It really works for me. I, I love it. It's simple and it's good. Um, and the book is You Can Heal Your Life. Check it out if you haven't seen it, it's very good. Now the new moon, when is the new moon happening? Well that is happening on the 1st of April. Uh, this is Pisces Revati Nakshatra and this is happening in your 10th house. So this is a great time to plant seeds regarding your career. Okay, What would you like your next stepping stone to be? And because we've got Mercury in this place, you know, think logically think practically think what do i want that immediate next step to be you know sometimes we are projecting far out into the future and you know maybe you're seeing yourself 10 20 years from now that's good to do as well but this is the kind of new moon where it's good to wish for that next step what, what do you want to do in that the very next step <clears throat> and Good to wish for that on the 1st of April. If you miss the 1st of April, if you're watching this some days into April, don't worry. You can just think of the 1st of April and write down in your journal what it is that you wish for. As a full moon, Libra, Chitra, Nakshatra, this is happening in your fifth house. This is on the 17th of April. This is a very creative moon. It's also a full moon eclipse, I do believe, as per Vedic astrology. And it's an eclipse, so we've got some, some things coming to an end here. This is in your fifth house. There's a lot of light here. This extra light may illuminate creative solutions to any current problems that you might be having. We do have Ketu here, so yes, that's making it an eclipse. Um, but Ketu is here too. This is an abundance of ancient wisdom. You might really be able to tap in and figure some things out here, find some creative solutions to whatever's going on in your life. But as this is an eclipse energy as well, you might find that something might come to an end. And it could be, fifth house could be something in your romantic life. Okay, so this could be, you know, the, the boyfriend or the girlfriend who's in the fringes, whom you're not sure about, or, you know, or if there's someone that you want to move on from or an old heartbreak that you want to move on from or any of this kind of thing this could be the kind of time where that just that just clears okay it, it completes it, it comes to a, a nice natural conclusion and that's that can be a really good thing 
So if you have some question marks over someone, you know, maybe, and maybe you'll get your own ahas and those insights that you get are just going to shift your energy to the point that they're not in your life anymore and a whole set of new people uh, become available to you. Gemini, this is a really interesting time for you. And I'm really excited about your... I am excited about... Do you know, this Jupiter in Pisces in your 10th house, though there are some challenging things about it, this is lovely energy. And especially when it comes to, you know, you could mentor young people at your workplace. Equally, you could find a really good mentor at your workplace as well. So I'm liking the look of all this for you, Gemini. All right, we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. I'm going to have to speed it along. I'm going a bit slow today. Uh, cancer, now this is Cancer, Ascendant Cancer, Moon Cancer, Sun, any of these. And we're going to take a look at Mars. We're going to take a look at Jupiter. Jupiter the whole year. This is huge. And we're going to take a look at the new moon and the full moon. So Mars, we've got 8th April to 17th of May. Mars is going to move into Aquarius in your 8th house. Now this is an interesting little transit here it's not going to be too long there are some nice things about it the difficulties here are you might feel a bit run down energetically your health might you just might get tired easily or you get drained easily you might not be feeling so social you might want a bit of hermit time you might enjoy a family getaway a short little trip with family but as we do have mars here be careful if you're traveling um, also be careful of any addictions. If you've been trying to quit some kind of addiction, be careful. You might be tempted by something, you know. Um, I know what that's like. I know, I know how hard it was for me to quit coffee and that's very difficult. So yes, uh, take care if you're trying to quit some kind of addiction. Um, April 2022 to April 2023. This is the big one. This is Jupiter moving into Pisces. It's going to be with you for the entire year oh fantastic this is your ninth house this is so good i'm so happy for you all right you can expand your career you can earn a lot more um, you can learn from seniors you know you can develop a really good relationship with your boss um, this is this is lovely energy i really like this this is also an excellent time to get married yes you could travel okay spiritual retreats pilgrimages to places that are really important to you these things are all possible at this time if you are traveling take extra care we do still have a lot of upheaval in the travel industry at the moment as a new moon pisces revati nakshatra this is happening on the 1st of april so if you watch this after the 1st of april it's okay um, you know, when it comes to planting a seed, you can still plant that seed anytime, okay? Uh, but where is all this happening for you? So 1st of April, new moon, this is ninth house. So if you were to plant a seed and if you were to wish for the ability to learn any new skill set, what would that be? What would you love to learn? What would, and think in a really practical way because we have Mercury here as well. So what skill set would really magically improve your your day-to-day -day work um, you know is there something that if, if you just learn that thing you know you could be even more productive or you could be even more creative or you could you know enjoy your work even more so that's for the first of april and then we've got a full moon libra chitra nakshatra this is on the 17th of april and this is an eclipse as well. I will do a video about this because I, I didn't even realize as I was putting these notes together yesterday. I think it was when I got to Virgo, I'm like, oh, hang on a minute. This is an eclipse. It is an eclipse. And it's cool. We've got two eclipses in April as per Sidereal Vedic. Uh, so yeah, it's one on the 30th of April. So I haven't covered that here. I'll cover it in a separate video. Um, 17th April we have a full moon okay so this is happening in your fourth house it is an eclipse it's a very creative moon okay so something might complete regarding your home could also complete regarding your relationship with your mother as well okay so and that that can be that can be nice that can be you recognizing that you have matured and that you 
you know, when it's when it's relationship with mother fourth house or when it's relationship with father ninth house, these are places of taking your power back. I, I see them in that way, that you are parenting yourself, you're maturing, you're taking more responsibility on you, you're not being so dependent on your parent. You know, these are great things. So this could be a beautiful full moon of recognition, of recognizing, wow, I am I am maturing. I am taking more responsibility than I used to. This could also be a time where something illuminates regarding your home in terms of ideas, inspiration. Maybe you're inspired to change something about your home, renovate your home, do something, move home. Maybe you get some ideas about where it is that you'd like to go in the future. But overall, Cancer, this is beautiful. And especially, you're very lucky. You've got that beautiful Jupiter transit. Jupiter transiting through your ninth house. That is gold. That's a winner. You've got that for the whole year as well. Lucky you, Cancer. You're one of the lucky signs. All right. Well, we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now we are looking just checking the time. I have to move it along because this is all going very slowly. Leo, we are looking at Leo, Ascendant Leo, Moon, Leo, Sun. And we're going to take a look at Mars transit, Jupiter transit. We're also going to take a look at the moons, new moon and full moon. So with Mars, we've got on the 8th of April to 17th May, Mars is going to move into Aquarius in your seventh house. Okay, so you might feel a little bit tired, a bit restless, a bit run down health wise. You know, you might find that you're working hard, but your energy gets burnt quickly and, you know, um, it's difficult. Be careful how you speak to your partner. Be careful how you speak to your mother with this transit. Be, basically, when you're in relationship with anyone, the other, okay, this is the seventh house of the other. So it could be any other. It could be your business partner, your co worker, your friend. It could be all kinds of people. Be careful how you speak to people at this time. Unless, of course, they're a very strong Mars personality and they love to just get to the, cut to the chase and speak their mind. Well, with them, speak your mind. But otherwise, try to be a bit diplomatic if you can. You're gonna need it. And then we've got April, so Jupiter's movement, April 2022 to April 2023. Jupiter moves into Pisces in your eighth house. Okay, so now this isn't, one of the best transits, Leo, I will be honest with you. It's a bit of a challenge when it comes to health. You might just be a little bit more run down. Um, a, a large planet going through a watery house, I have found this to be challenging. And I have found this to be, um, yeah, that I don't have the kind of energy that I normally do. And also expenses go up as well. I do notice that. You also, yeah, I've got the note here, you might have to work harder. That could be a thing. I've got the note here, be careful in family relationships. Arguments are possible with this transit. But the beautiful thing about this transit is that it's excellent for tapping occult gifts and talents. And I know we have a huge number of light workers and healers uh, and all these kinds of professionals in the audience. So this is great for that. And you know, if you want to expand your occult, skiff, uh, occult gifts, skills, talents, all that kind of thing. It's excellent for figuring out subconscious patterns. If there are dynamics or patterns that are happening within you that you could do with rewiring and changing, this is great for that. This is also excellent for things like meditation. If you've got a strong meditation practice or any of that, this is a really good transit for that as well. Now the new moon is happening, Pisces Revathi Nakshatra, it's happening on the 1st of April in your eighth house. So if you could ask Jupiter to grant you an occult skill, what would that be? You know, would you like to be, you know, able to experience an extraordinary level of peace? Would you like to be a bit more psychic than you are? Would you like to be intuitive or would you like to channel some kind of alien being, right? Like you, you could ask for anything. So, um, see, I wouldn't ask for that one. I'd, I'd be scared. That, you know, you can ask for anything, right? So that's the 1st of April. And if you're watching this after the 1st of April, do it anyway. Don't worry, just write in your journal, 1st of April, I wish for this. Because time is malleable and an illusion as well. So, you know. Um, 
Now there's a full moon happening Libra Chitra Nakshatra. This is 17th April in your third house. This is also a very creative moon happening here. We have a creative new moon and we have a creative full moon. It's also an eclipse as well guys. I'll cover that in another video. But um, cycles could come to a close with your friendships, uh, with groups of peers. They might just be some friends that you know you discover that you're not compatible with them anymore or groups of people even where it's just like I used to hang out with them and now I just can't you know and it, it's that it, it will just become naturally apparent and there's, there doesn't need to be any argument about it or any of that things just naturally um, move on and change you know and that, that's what I love about the planets as we observe that we just see the natural movements but Leo, I'm really loving this Jupiter in Pisces in your eighth house. I'm loving that from a point of view of you expanding yourself spiritually and you really gaining the benefits of things like meditation. If you put in a meditation practice at this time, my goodness, you will your progress will really skyrocket. So I'm excited for that, Leo. Thank you for stopping by and we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. How are we doing for time? This is going to shut off in a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll deal with it. <laughs> Virgo, we're looking at Virgo. Um, the memory card's going to run out. That's what I wanted to say. Virgo moon, Virgo ascendant, Virgo sun. Welcome. We are going to take a look at the movement of Mars. We're also going to take a look at the movement of Jupiter as well as the new moon and the full moon that's happening this month. So Mars on the 8th of April to the 17th of May, we've got Mars moving into Aquarius in your sixth house. Oh, this is beautiful. This is so, so good. I'm really excited. You can really excel at work. You can attract more customers. You know, you can win. You can win people's hearts and minds. You know, you can do all kinds of things here. So this is also great for court cases. You know, that word winning is really important here. If you've got court cases that are going on, if you have some competition, if you have something where you need to achieve something, this is a good transit for that. Now, April 2022 to April 2023, we've got Jupiter moving into Pisces in your seventh house. Oh my goodness, you have got two incredible transits. This is amazing, Virgo, I'm very excited for you. This is a really great transit. So this transit, I think I was saying this transit is great for health. Pisces in your seventh house. This is great for your marriage. Okay, if you're married, this is really great for your marriage. You can expect better times with your partner. So that's really excellent. You will notice that relationships of all kinds are going to improve at this time. Great time to expand your business. Great time to expand your social media profiles. Um, the possibility of traveling is definitely there, you know, and also the possibility of socializing more. That's all going to happen for you this year. So I'm really excited, Virgo. Take extra care if you're traveling. I do believe that the airline industry and travel industry is still uh, not what it used to be. And I think it will uh, recover and regain what it used to be, but I, I still think things aren't great there. So take extra care. But if we have a look at the moon situations, we've got new moon, Pisces, Revathi Nakshatra. This is on the 1st of April in your seventh house. So you can wish to get married if you're single. This is especially for women, okay? So if you're a single lady, um, is it, what song is it? Beyonce, all the single ladies, something? I don't know. Anyway, uh, you can get married. So this is good or like meet someone, you know, you don't want to just meet and marry in, in one Jupiter cycle here, do you? And you're just in one year, that's a bit, that's a bit wild. Um, although, I'm kidding. <laughs> Wish for improvement in your business, accelerated career growth. Yeah, absolutely. This is, you know, I'm seeing this new moon here in Pisces as an ability to kind of, you're planting that seed that Jupiter is then going to come along and, and make it happen. Okay, so plant the seed. Jupiter's coming like, you know, very soon uh, in April. Let's see, when is he coming exactly? Let me tell you. 14th April. Yeah, so are you planting the seed, you know, on the 1st of April? He's coming along 14th April. So 
plant the seed for better times in your relationship or to meet the right person and you can wish for improvement in your business you can wish for accelerated career growth that's the new moon first of april okay then we've got a full moon 17th of april this is in libra chitra nakshatra this is happening in your second house so this is a very creative moon it's also an eclipse there's eclipse energy here too so you might discover that cycles will complete in regards to financial matters um, or regarding family related matters as well something could come to a completion this is also a good time to converse with family if there's someone you want to have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with great time to do that you know to express the fullness of your emotion so that's the full moon there but Virgo I think you are one of the very few signs if maybe you're the only sign I'm not sure but you've got an excellent thing here you've got excellent Mars transit at the same time as an excellent Jupiter transit they're, they're coinciding the start of these two they, they're both fantastic so I'm really excited for you Virgo so really this is excellent excellent energy April uh, April and May April through to mid-May absolutely excellent energy for you to initiate things start things approach customers grow expand create do go for it really go for it Virgo I'm very very excited and, and just feel the energy see how it's playing out for you because look, you might have some other things going on in your chart you know um, that you know and, and other, other things going on in your life too so play it by ear but from the perspective of sidereal Vedic astrology it's, it's looking very very good all right Libra Libra welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just checking the time Libra we are welcoming Libra Moon, Libra Ascendant, Libra Sun, any of these, you're welcome. Now we're going to take a look at the movement of Mars. We're going to take a look at the movement of Jupiter. Jupiter is the big news. And we're going to take a look at the new moon and the full moon. So on the 8th of April to 17th May, we've got Mars moving into Aquarius in your fifth house. So there could be some frustration here. There could be frustration with bosses. There could be frustration with your employees if you are a boss. Um, definitely be careful how you speak with children your children at this time or your family or your employees your co-workers people around you um, expenses could be running high at this time as well so this Mars transit is is you know not not one of the best Mars transits but you're gonna have a very good one uh, after kind of mid-may so don't worry things things will change you're gonna have a lot better times with Mars later April 2022 to April 2023 Jupiter moves into Pisces in your sixth house so this is not ideal uh, particularly as Jupiter expands an area of focus wherever you put Jupiter he's going to expand the things that are there now in the sixth house we do have some challenging things here okay we can have illness we can have disease we can have um, you know arguments problems competitors people trying to get to us all that kind of thing but you know I'm not against the sixth house I quite like it because one of the things I like about it is all that energy and I really discovered this when I was studying the chart of Bruce Lee I discovered that that energy there if you transmute it it actually pushes you up it's pretty incredible what it can do so don't ever be put off by you know uh, the sixth house now how I'm seeing your Jupiter transit is that if you just stay on top of your health so get healthy stay healthy be healthy choose healthy okay make health a focus Jupiter's going to expand that right that's how this works so keep health as your prime focus and as your prime thing don't think about and really use your mind you can and you can use your mind because Jupiter is um, very much connected in with consciousness and mind and things like that so now when you're competing at work for this year for this entire year compete only with yourself do not look by your side don't look at what the others are doing you run your own race and stay focused on your path and Jupiter will expand your path 
okay so Jupiter is going to expand the good stuff so Libra you're going to have to be disciplined this year for the whole year <laughs> if you can really stay positive really keep yourself focused on health really keep yourself focused on your path Jupiter will expand all the good where you're focusing okay um, I have the note here serve with a humble manner yeah also the note impress Saturn that's what I do whenever the going gets tough whenever things are difficult it's like who do I want to impress I want to impress Saturn you know the taskmaster because he'll remember and he'll reward okay um, and that's not far away from you uh, Saturn is well, um, maybe about five years you're gonna get your big rewards from him but it's coming it's coming it's coming all right now the camera battery is flashing I don't know if I should change I'll let it blank out and then I'll change the battery we have a new moon new moon Pisces Revati Nakshatra this is on the 1st of April and for you this is happening in your sixth house so I would say use this new moon period to wish for rock-solid health while Jupiter transits okay wish for health keep your mind focused on health and that's what you're gonna have I've got a couple of book recommendations which I will put on the screen dr. David Hawkins uh, I think you could read healing and recovery that's very good or you could read Louise Hay you can heal your life I'll put both of those on the screen um, those could be really helpful to read across this Jupiter transit full moon we have full moon Libra Chitra Nakshatra 17th April this is happening for you in your first house so this is a really creative full moon a lot of bright light this is an eclipse as well so it's quite big and cycles could complete oh and this is huge for you because this is happening Libra this is all about you so cycles could complete regarding yourself regarding your sense of self regarding who you think you are this could be an amazing time to reinvent yourself you know after this full moon you might come to some realizations about who you have always been and who you would like to be you know so yeah I think I was just saying that you know it's a real time to reinvent yourself in some way Libra I'm liking the look of the energy here for you I'm loving the Jupiter transit I'm loving the a the challenge of it the challenge of being positive all the time you know you, you are gonna have to keep your focus positive or keep your focus on what you want to create if you can do that successfully my goodness you're gonna have it because the next transit that you have after this one is Jupiter in the seventh it's just gonna be reward 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 like it's gonna be amazing okay so uh, make the most of, of Jupiter in the sixth you can do it I can I can see that you will do that all right thank you so much for joining Libra and we are now going to welcome Scorpio Scorpio welcome thank you so much for joining now we are welcoming Scorpio moon ascendant or Sun any one of these we're going to take a look at the movement of Mars the movement of Jupiter and then we're going to take a look at the new moon and the full moon all right let's see so Mars 8th April to 17th May 2022 Mars is going to move into Aquarius in your fourth house so this is, this is not the best transit I will be honest here um, if you're having to move or do some kind of property dealings be extra careful if you can put that off till after mid-May that would be ideal okay um, definitely be careful with your mum's health or if you're spending time with mum and things are getting frustrated frustrating you're at home you've got cabin fever um, just you know try to um, speak very carefully in, in relationship with the family you know and this is a really good time to to just take a bit of time out um, yeah it's, it's always good to just kind of walk the dog go out calm down and then speak okay it's, it's all that type of stuff will help uh, over this time you also might find that competitors come out of nowhere as well um, or people trying to get at you that that can be a thing but let's take a look at your Jupiter oh this is good good you've got a good transit so don't worry about Mars if Mars is frustrating 
tune into Jupiter. So now from April 2022 to April 2023, we've got Jupiter moving into Pisces in your fifth house. This is excellent. So your finances will improve. Jupiter is going to attend to your finances and improve that. Uh, your relationship with your loved ones will improve. You know, speculative finance could be good if you're share trading and that kind of thing. But I would say there, be very, very careful. I'm not very knowledgeable about markets and all this kind of thing. And I, I think that that is, um, from what I'm hearing, yeah, the, the money markets, there's going to be a lot of shifting going on uh, from what I'm hearing. So be very careful. And a lot of you are experts, you know what you're doing, so you'll be fine. Now, this is a great transit to meet someone new. If you're single, this is excellent. Um, it's also great if you're a student, if you're studying, uh, you know, you can, your concentration might be brilliant at this time, or you might be able to, yes, basically to take a lot in, you know, Jupiter is an excellent energy for, for input. You, you can just take, you can be like a sponge. You can just take, I remember my Jupiter Mahadasha. It was incredible. I had so many experiences. I learned so many things. I, it really was a sponge time and you do become heavy with knowledge, right? Guru heavy. This is really good for your energy and your health too. So if you've been feeling run down and tired, which you may well have been, because I'm pretty sure Jupiter in the, oh no. Apologies about that Scorpio. I just wanted to check on something, but I'm pretty sure, I was just checking on where have you just come from. And if you're coming from Jupiter in the fourth, then yeah, you might have been feeling tired or run down, but you're going to have great energy. So your energy is going to pick up. Your health is going to pick up. I'm pretty sure I have one of those two and I'm so in need of it. I'm so in need of some like better energy because yeah, things have been really, um, I've got, I've got Saturn in a watery house right now and it's very difficult. So I know what this is and yes, you'll have Jupiter coming out of the fourth, which is watery. Yeah, of course. Um, it's good. You got a good thing here. Did I cover the thing about if you're single, you can meet someone? You can. Especially um, if you're a lady hoping to meet a man, this is brilliant for that. All right, new moon, Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. It's happening on the 1st of April, happening in your fifth house. So this is really a time to wish for something from Jupiter. Ask him uh, to help you out here and ask him, I would say to help you with your creativity. Actually, one of the things you will observe with this new moon here in the fifth house is you will just naturally be creative, more creative. You'll have ideas. New moon, I always tend to see it like a portal. Ideas just come through. It's incredible. New things come through. So and it can, it can be quite a fertile thing as well. Sometimes like people um, get pregnant easily and things like that. So it can be that too. So maybe be careful with that. But um, if you want to get ideas, Yes, this is brilliant. So if you're a particularly creative person, keep a dream diary or keep a little journal or keep um, some paper in your purse with a pen so you can jot things down or use your iPhone with the voice recorder just to record some idea that comes to you. But you could be really quite creative around this new moon. This is on the 1st of April. And you know, give or take a, a few days either side. This is not strict. Yes, it's just around this time, okay? So if you're watching this after the 1st of April, don't worry. Um, you're, not gonna, you're not gonna miss out on anything. Now, the full moon is happening, Libra, Chitra, Nakshatra. This is on the 17th of April. This is happening in your 12th house. And this is an eclipse. This is a very creative moon. And what you might discover is that cycles could complete regarding your spirituality, regarding your subconscious, you might understand some kind of dynamic or pattern in a very deep way. And this is brilliant, Scorpio. This is the kind of thing where something could illuminate that you get some understanding on that makes a real shift in your life. And I've been having some of these things happening. I've been working with my health actually, trying to figure some things out about my headaches. And I figured out something just recently through contemplation and yeah I noticed that the time where I usually get a headache I'm not getting them anymore 
So, um, yeah, it's pretty amazing. We can do work with our subconscious mind. It's taken me years. I've been working on the headache thing for ages and getting nowhere. But, you know, the full moon, 17th April, 12th house, something really could illuminate about the way you've been doing life or some dynamic or some pattern and that when you figure that out, it can change your life, you know, especially if there's been something you've been working towards. You can really figure something out in a deep way, Scorpio. So I'm excited for you. I'm especially excited for your Jupiter transit. You've got an entire year of beautiful energy with your Jupiter there in Pisces. Okay, so good on you, Scorpio. You've, you've been working hard. You deserve um, some great energy here. All right, we are now going to welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time. We're all good. This is Sagittarius moon, ascendant or sun. You could be any one of these. And I notice that my Sagittarius moon people, you are in your final phase of Sadi Sati. So I hope you're going okay with that. We might talk about that. Um, you know, we will be talking about that actually. Saturn, we will be talking about that uh, in, in the next episode. So this episode, we're going to be talking about Mars. We're going to be talking about Jupiter. We'll take a look at the new moon and the full moon. So on the 8th of April to the 17th of May, we've got Mars moving into Aquarius in your third house. This is excellent energy. This is so good. I'm really excited for you. This can be a real boost to your social media platform. This can be job opportunities, promotions, friends coming in, meeting new friends, you know, um, promotions, you putting yourself forward, you know, this is a great time to be doing that. You might also have energy, okay? Maybe you've been feeling sluggish or tired. Well, you've got some beautiful energy here. Now, April 2022 to April 2023. I just want to check one thing. Yeah, this is your Jupiter transit, April this year to April next year. And that's Jupiter moves into Pisces, fourth house for you. So now this is a bit of a mixed transit here, okay? Because you would think that Jupiter would do really great in the fourth house, but um, it's actually a bit mixed because it is a large planet um, in a watery place. And what you might find is you might feel that your health is run down. And I've got the note here, be careful in close relationships. Be careful with mother's health, okay? If you're looking after your mum, um, it's not the best time to travel either. Take care if you have to travel. Take extra, extra care, because I do think that the airline industry and the travel industry is still encountering, you know, difficulties at this time. Expenses could go up, okay? Take extra care in property matters. If you have to move, you can move. Uh, you know, but just just take extra care, you know. And the other thing is, if you're moving as a family with other people, check the chart of your husband or wife or, you know, the people in your family. Um, because that's the brilliant thing about families, you know. Sometimes it's someone else's stars who are, who are making the shift happen. So um, maybe it's not all on you. Now, new moon, when is that happening? That's Pisces, Revati Nakshatra, 1st of April. This is happening in your fourth house. So I would say this is, new moon is a time to wish for something. And we've got Jupiter going into your fourth house and I did say that this could be challenging on your health. Um, I would say wish that Jupiter grants you really good health all year round, okay? Um, you can also wish for some expansion at home or that in the future you do move to the right place where you really want to be if you're not in the place where you really want to be right now. Now the full moon is in Libra Chitra Nakshatra. This is happening on the 17th of April and this is happening for you in your 11th house. So this is actually an eclipse energy as well. And I'll do another video about the eclipses because we've got, uh, as per sidereal Vedic astrology, we've got an eclipse here in this full moon and we've got one at the very end of the month as well. So this eclipse is regarding cycles completing around your friendships, your networking circles. And I have the note here that some friendships may have run their course. Okay, you might just discover that 
yeah, you don't you don't have things in common with certain people anymore or you know, there's all this full moonlight here that may just illuminate the fact that wow that thing wasn't right for me anyway or you know all this kind of thing might become quite clear you might be able to see something in a very clear way at this time but Sagittarius what I'm loving for you is I'm loving your Mars energy you've got a terrific Mars transit and that's 8th April to 17th May make the most of that energy okay because that's really beautiful energy especially for career especially for work especially for getting stuff done for being hands-on and really achieving and getting things completed okay we are now going to welcome Capricorn Capricorn welcome now this is Capricorn moon Capricorn ascendant Capricorn sun I was just checking the time there we're okay uh, now Capricorn moons you are in the middle of Sati Sati period my heart goes out to you you are the heroes of the zodiac right now you're doing the tough stuff we will talk about Saturn in the next month's episode okay but right now let's keep our focus on Mars and Jupiter we're also going to take a look at the new moon and the full moon so from the 8th of April to 17th May 2022 we've got Mars moving into Aquarius in your second house so be careful with family relationships yes Mars in the second house man you just you got to be careful about what you say and you might just be yeah I've got the note here tempted well tempted to spend more but tempted to just speak your mind <laughs> but maybe that might not be the right thing to do you'll know you, you'll see how that goes uh, you might be tempted to spend more that's quite true um, yeah Mars in the sometimes Mars can be stingy here though as well I've seen that in a birth chart I'm trying to think back I'm trying to think back to my BB Raman notes yeah but he could he could well want to spend more here as well um, how you can channel this energy it's not the best Mars energy you can channel it into organizing your finances Maybe there are some admin or some things that you need to catch up on or some things that you've been lazy about or something where you need to sit and plug in your expenses or whatever it is. This is a good energy to do that. It's a good energy if you've got this spare Mars energy around money just to organize your money or organize your cash or expenses or whatever. Uh, now let's take a look at your Jupiter energy. So this is April 2022 to April 2023. Jupiter's moving into Pisces. This is the big news and it's happening in your third house. So what you might find is it's a bit of a mixed transit, this one. Business might slow down, okay? Um, but you equally, you might be able to expand your social media profile, all right? So this isn't too bad. Um, this could be some expansion energy in terms of your visibility but, it, but we've got the ironic thing here of yeah your, your profile might expand but then your business might slow down this could be draining on health possibly relationships with friends and siblings could be tested at this time okay um, short trips are possible you might feel inspired to do some kind of short trip which could be good it could be rejuvenating it could be a really nice thing if you're able to get away this is though a great transit for spiritual growth okay so if you haven't got a meditation practice and you would like one and this is really a great year for you to put one in place okay um, this could be amazing for spiritual growth this could also be amazing for you know meeting new gurus finding new teachers to learn from it could be amazing for that now there is a new moon happening Pisces Revathi Nakshatra this is happening on the 1st of April in your third house so I would suggest wish for good health for the entire year you know when we've got a new moon you can wish for something well wish for good health for this entire Jupiter cycle because Jupiter is just about to go into that Pisces house so plant the seed right and Jupiter might water that seed so new moon 1st of April and if you're watching this you know a few days after or even a couple of weeks after it doesn't matter um, you know just in your journal write down 1st of April and what you wish for and I would suggest definitely wishing for good solid energy and great health 
for the entire year. And if you keep your focus on that, Jupiter will expand your focus. So keep your focus on health, keep your focus on good energy, and Jupiter's going to expand that. Okay, but that's, that's going to be down to you and your free will. All right. So um, now full moon is happening, Libra, Chitra, Nakshatra. This is on the 17th of April. This is happening in your 10th house. It's a very creative moon. Okay. Uh, and it is also an eclipse energy happening. Now cycles could complete regarding your work. Um, this is not a great time to initiate new work projects. Okay. Wait for this full moon to just subside. But you might find something completes regarding your work. And as this is an eclipse, you might also find that some things come to an end at your work. Um, that kind of thing as well. Just checking the time. We're okay. All right. Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome to your mini reading. Now we are meeting Aquarius Moon, Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Sun. And I'm just noticing here, Aquarius, your moon is in the first phase. Uh, if you're an Aquarius moon, you're in the first phase of Sadisati. I hope you're doing okay. Hang in there. You know, you're being polished into a diamond. All right. Always remember that. Saturn, he'll, he'll test you only as much as you can bear. And if you meet the test, my God, you're going to be so strong. Okay. So keep going. Because Sadisati is not easy. And I know it's, it's a challenging time. Um, we are going to talk about the movement of Mars, we're going to talk about the movement of Jupiter. Now Mars is, and then we're going to talk about the moons. So Mars is going to move into Aquarius in your first house. This is 8th April to 17th May. Okay, now this could be a little bit draining on your health. If you're tired at any point in time, rest. It's really hard to do. I know how hard it is to just like not do anything. It's very difficult. I find it very difficult. But you're going to have to be sensible and you're going to have to build rest into your day, possibly. Okay, so just find ways to do that. You might find that your expenses are a bit higher at this time. This is also not the greatest transit to be starting a business. Um, also, be careful in your relationship with your mother. Be careful how you speak to your mother. Okay, that's going to be important. But your Jupiter transit is fantastic. I'm so excited for you, Aquarius. You're one of the very lucky signs. So this is April 2022 to April 2023. This is so good. I'm so happy for you. Jupiter moves into Pisces in your second house. Okay, so this is great. This is more money coming in. This is gains. This is recognition. This is great for healers. Okay, if you're a healer, wow, you've just you can be very healing, okay? You can have a good uh, benefit and effect on, on people. It's great for healers, great time for healers to practice their craft. Really good. Excellent for speech. You know, people will think you're wise. People will be like, wow, what did you just say? Um, people might think you're psychic even, you know. Uh, family relationships improve. Your health improves. Okay, now I might be really overselling this. I know you've got, you know, especially if you're an Aquarius moon, and you've got Saturn in a difficult place. So we'll talk about Saturn in the next month. But, um, you know, if, if the going gets tough there with Saturn, then tune into this, this lovely Jupiter energy, because that's good for the whole year. Now you've got a new moon, Pisces, Ravathi Nakshatra, 1st of April in your second house. So you can wish for expansion in your career or in your business. You know, Jupiter wants to grant this to you. So wish for that. Plant the seed. And then Jupiter is going to go over and, and water that. It's going to be beautiful. Now, it doesn't matter if you're watching this after the 1st of April, it's perfectly fine. Even a few days after, it's fine. Uh, now, it's just intention. Intention is what matters more. Now, full moon is happening Libra Chitra Nakshatra, 17th April in your ninth house. It's a very creative moon. It is an eclipse energy as well. We do have eclipse season. It's coming in our April. We've got one at the end of very end of the month. I'll do a video about this. Um, so we do have eclipses. So we have a creative full moon here. So cycles could complete regarding your work, even regarding your father, your relationship with your father. Um, Things might be illuminated. You might see where you've given your power away 
or what authorities still hold power over you. Okay, that will become obvious. I've got the note here, good time to reflect on how you parent yourself. Yeah, and that, that is the spiritual journey. You know, we're always looking, how can I take total responsibility for myself and my actions? That's really what we're looking to do. All right, we are now going to welcome Pisces. Oh, the camera thingy is going to run out. Doesn't matter. I'm going to try and get through this. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. The memory card will fill up at some point, so watch out. Um, we are welcoming Pisces Moon, Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Sun. And we're going to talk about the movement of Mars and we're going to talk about the movement of Jupiter and the new moon and the full moon. So we've got... Mars moving into Aquarius in your 12th house. This is happening 8th April to 17th May 2022. Mars in your 12th house. So this could be a time where you actually might experience some body aches. You might actually... Hi there Pisces. I knew it would cut out. I'm sorry about that. You might experience some body aches. I was saying that, wasn't I? I think so. You might be tired. You might be run down. You might feel that your sleep is disturbed a little bit at this time. This could be a really good time for you to engage in some light yoga, even some martial arts. Bruce Lee, Mars in the 12th, right? He was a martial artist. Um, you might travel for work, that is a possibility. You might also notice that your expenses go up as a result of this Mars transit. So just take care of all these things. Be aware that can happen. Now the Jupiter transit is looking quite interesting. This is from April 2022 to April 2023. So this is Jupiter moving into Pisces in your first house. So this could actually be a bit of a mixed transit. Okay, this could be a little bit draining on your health at times. Um, you're really going to want to take care in your relationships with others. Okay, so just be, be careful, be diplomatic. Be diplomatic, be humble. Okay, <laughs> if you can. Uh, that would be a helpful thing. This is an excellent transit for spiritual growth. Okay, this is excellent for you know light workers, artists, healers, any of you beautiful people who are in all those kind of professions. This is great for you. I've got the note here, you'll become so wise through this period. Any challenge that you encounter, find the wisdom. Alchemize, find the wisdom, turn it around, see what's going on, see what the lesson is, learn the lesson. Share the wisdom. That's going to be important. It's an excellent time for you to put in a meditation practice as well, if you don't have one. Yeah, that's, that's going to be important. Now there's a new moon, Pisces, Revati Nakshatra. This is happening on the 1st of April in your first house. So I'm going to say here, wish. You know, new moon is a time to wish for new things. Wish for great health from Jupiter, okay? I, I think that's just going to be wish for strong, robust, good, great, beautiful health. Because you're going to have a busy year as well. You, you're also still got Pisces. I'm pretty sure you've still got Saturn 11th from your moon, don't you? Let's just have a little look here. I'm curious. I've also got a new memory card, so I've got the time. Yeah, you do. Make the most of this year. You've, you've still got Saturn placed beautifully. He's going to give a little taste of Aquarius. He's going to give a little taste of, you know, Pisces moon will be entering Sati Sati, so that's not so good. But um, for the rest of you, this year is your last year to make the most of that Saturn energy. We'll talk about that next month. But wish for great health from Jupiter, and I'm suggesting that because then you can really make the most of whatever opportunities are left that Saturn has to give you. Now there's a full moon happening, Libra, Chitra, Nakshatra, 17th April. This is happening in your 8th house. This is a very creative full moon and it's also an eclipse. So cycles could complete regarding your family, regarding shared assets, regarding dynamics in relationship with your spouse. Okay, um, There are some things that could come to a close there, but... Pisces, I am loving some of this energy here for you. In particular, I am loving the, the um, Jupiter transit through your first house. It might be a little bit difficult sometimes on your health, but what you will gain spiritually is phenomenal. And I can tell you that I, so I've you know, been having Saturn move through a water house 
big planet in a watery house it is hard on the health I totally understand that but the amount of spiritual growth the shifts the things I've figured out in this Saturn yeah 2.5 year transit I've, we've all just got one year left my goodness I'm actually really happy that I've gone through uh, what, what has been a very difficult transit but I've learned so much and, and that's Jupiter isn't it you know Jupiter is that planet where he, he can put you through the ringer as well like Saturn does but you come out of it so wise with Jupiter Jupiter's a fantastic planet of course being Pisces you know Jupiter is very important for you guys but I'm gonna wrap up this episode here thank you so much to those of you who have watched this video I love making these videos and I look forward to seeing you next time Thank you.